Please get ready for a dictation of transcription number 271 from Sir Kalash Chandra Magazine. Five seconds. Start. I had no intention to take part in this debate, but looking at the different points of view which different honorable members have put forward, I think I should mention the position as it is with regard to groundnut oil. It is a commodity the production of which varies from year to year. It has got to a large extent to depend on the climate, rain and so forth. It is difficult to evaluate the crop because groundnut is grown in different parts of the country and it begins to move in one part in October and November and in some other parts in December and January. Therefore, it is difficult to evaluate the exact position of groundnut. Besides, we do not have correct data as regards the crop. Unfortunately, our statistics with regard to agricultural production are meager and it is difficult to know exactly what the crops are of different commodities and therefore it is difficult to evaluate even the crops. I would also like to inform the House that of the total crop of groundnuts, exports are to the extent of 2.5 to 5%. There is not so much of surplus as it is somehow or the other felt here. So whatever the export policy of the government, it reflects on the price structure. That very small percentage of export has a bearing on the price structure of groundnut. Because there is a very small percentage of surplus, if a little more is exported, the price goes up. And if a little less is exported, there is always a tendency for the price to fall. I heard an honorable member say that the policy should be such that the growers must know beforehand what it is. This year, if I may just illustrate in the beginning, the prices were much higher than what they are today. The prices have dropped even though export was allowed because the export duty was put in last year the prices were much lower in the beginning of the season and then they went up. It is a difficult thing and I can appreciate the difficulty of the Honorable, the Commerce and Industry Minister with regard to what the export policy should be. It is also difficult for him to follow exactly the effect the export policy will have on the internal price structure in the next year. It is, it is a very well to say after the event that if the policy had been of this nature, it would have been better but for the price structure. I do agree that it would be better for every interest concerned if the policy can be of a long range so that everybody knows what the position would be. I do not know whether it would be possible for the Honorable Minister to follow that policy because of the difficulties I just pointed out. But if it is possible to formulate a policy on a long-range basis, it would be in the interest of everybody concerned because people would know exactly what the policy is. The question of the policy is also allied with a number of other questions. Formerly, we used to export groundnuts, then we stopped exporting groundnuts except a very small quantity. Now we export more oil. There is also the other consideration whether the oil we should export, the vegetable ghee or the hydrogenated oil. All these things depend not only on the internal factors but also on external factors. It has also been said that we should not allow so much quantity of this oil or that. We must allow more quantity and by allowing more quantity, we might perhaps have our prices go up or perhaps by allowing less quantity, the prices may go down and things like that. There is also another factor which has a bearing on this, the word price factor, the word supply and demand, and that depends on our prices and the adjustment of export duties. The policy, as I see, is that the maximum benefit of the export price must go to the state and whatever little margin is left should go to the exporters. That has been the policy till now because there has been a seller's market and that is why we could dictate with regard to prices. Now the position has changed completely. In the world, it has become a buyer's market and therefore it has to be considered whether in the buyer's market we can dictate our prices. As the Honorable Commerce Minister pointed out, 
according to world supply and demand position there is a very small surplus certainly the small surplus or small deficit does account a great deal for the change in prices the prices go down definitely even if there is a small surplus the world prices are so high with regard to oils and fats that a slight surplus is definitely bound to bring down the prices i do feel that the policy must be a long range one stop